I woke up in the middle of the night. My leg was aching again. I heard them talking, or rather arguing. The flicker of the firelight dances on the walls of my tent as I sit. I see my grandson's small chest rising and falling with each breath, sleeping beside me. I close my eyes and memories flood back. I watched worry etch itself into the faces of our elders and heard the cries of hungry children in the night. I was living in the past until the sun rose and my eyes fell on a father walking anxiously near a small figure wrapped in furs, his son, whose forehead got warmer and warmer, fighting a fever that refused to break. I notice the arrowhead hanging from the father's neck, a relic passed down through generations. I can sense that this hunter is on the border of a decision, a decision that could change everything. Days pass, and there is a change in the camp. The father returns from the hunt, with more prey than anyone has seen in months. At first, there is relief, even celebration. The color was returning to the cheek of the man's son, getting his strength back. But as I watch, I see something troubling. Father's eyes have a distracted shine. He spends less time in the camp, venturing further into the wilderness, staying out for long periods. The arrowhead that once hung proudly around his neck now stays tucked away out of sight. I overhear whispers. Strange traps have been found in the forest and animals are wounded in ways they never seen before. They talk of entire herds being driven off cliffs, of poisoned watering holes. The relationship to nature and the balance of the hunt was shifting. Two things that are sacred to our people. The father's success comes at a cost. I observe other families struggling, their hunts becoming less fruitful. The animals are alert in a way they never been before. This time, the dry season stretches on longer than it used to, and the tension in the camp grows. I see the father becoming isolated and offensive. His son is healthy now, but at what price? The admiration in the eyes of the tribe has turned to suspicion, even fear. As the moon rises, casting long shadows across the camp, I observe how his success has brought change. Bellies are fuller, but the forest has grown quieter. My weathered hands tremble slightly as I tend the fire. Memories of my youth stirring. I too had once felt the allure of clever solutions, the pride of outsmarting nature. The consequences of those actions still echo in my dreams. In the distance a wolf howls, sound once common, now rare. The father's grip tightened on the arrowhead. His eyes shift between his sleeping son and the dark forest beyond. When does the hunt become more than survival? At what point does cleverness overshadow wisdom? I watch as the father approaches the tribal elders, catching fragments of hushed conversations, question about ancient hunting grounds, forgotten rituals, finding harmony with the land. As the camp settles into an uneasy sleep, I ponder the unseen cost of progress. The fine line between adaptation and destruction. The real challenge is not just in the pursuit, 
but in having the wisdom to know when to lower one's bow. The wind whispers through the grass, carrying a question to all who would listen. In our quest for abundance, what do we risk leaving our children? A world tamed by our cunning or a wilderness wise enough to teach them.